Hello, welcome. This is SharePoint Power Hour and I'm Laura Rogers. This is a live show that I do every week at 11 Central. Um, again, I'm Laura Rogers. I um, do different topics on SharePoint Power Hour. Just um, I'm not a developer. I don't write code. I am not a server admin anymore. Um, but a lot of things that I do on Power Hour have to do with just things you can do in SharePoint and SharePoint online with Office 365, just out of the box without having to be an admin and having to know code. And uh, let's see, I last week, so we have this Q&A app that is in the Google Hangout. And last week there were issues with the Q&A. It just simply was not working. So if you guys are in here watching, I see four of you so far, please go ahead and type something in the Q&A so we can make sure that it's functioning. And let's see. So a little bit of housekeeping about how this works. Well, I'm, I know that there's kind of a delay for of a few seconds, so it'll take you all a minute to, for me to see your questions. But um, the way this works is that it's streaming live. So it is streaming live using a Google Hangout, and it's also streaming live to YouTube at the same time. You can Go ahead and you can, if you're watching this on YouTube, there's a little yellow link on there to be able to go straight over to the, um, the Google Hangout and that's where the Q&A is. Oh, thanks, Jeremy. I see that the Q&A is working. Awesome, good to know. Okay. <laughs> and I didn't do anything different this time. So Google Hangouts just, you know, you never know when you're dealing with the cloud what you're gonna get sometimes from day to day. <laughs> Um, all right, so it looks like the Q&A is working. Today's topic is InfoPath. I know that InfoPath is a dying technology and InfoPath is going away and it's it's got 10 more years till 2026 till it'll be officially dead according to Microsoft. But it is still around. It is still in, even in the brand new SharePoint 2016 that's coming out, it's still there and people are still using it. I get, I have all these, you know, sort of older InfoPath um, blog posts that I've written and I still get tons and tons. I have hundreds of questions it's on some of those blog posts that I've written about dealing with InfoPath. So um, I'm just going to address a few of those here and hopefully you guys watch, you know, are watching this and can help, you know, even if it's not very specific to you, it can help you figure out whatever your particular trials and tribulations are with InfoPath. Um, there, uh, there's a blog post that I wrote yesterday on my new, oh my, my new site is up. I moved over from SharePoint 2010 over to WordPress. And I'm very excited because it's lovely now. So I've got my, my new wonderlaura.com site. Y'all should go check it out if you haven't already. Um, but I wrote a blog post yesterday about this InfoPath Q&A. And I had been going through, I try to keep up with the comments and questions on my blog. It's really hard because I get several a day. But um, I was going through just several of the ones in the InfoPath questions were a little bit more complex than it um, than I could answer in just a comment in there. So I figured I'd go through and build some of those out. Um, the prerequisites to this session are, I, I did a, another power hour and these links are also in my blog posts from yesterday. I did another power hour about um, how to query a SharePoint list from InfoPath. And I also did a power hour on how to default some values in the people picker. So I get a lot of questions about um, just the concept of querying other lists and querying the user profile service and all that. So I addressed those and I addressed just all these fundamentals about how to do this stuff and how to test it and how to understand what's going on. So um, y'all please, um, make sure you understand those concepts and have seen those other two um, before, because those are, you know, you kind of have to have that under your belt before you're going to understand some of the more advanced stuff that I'm going to do in this power hour, because um, I'm not going to go over the basics again. I, you know, I don't want to be doing the same thing over and over. So since you guys can go watch the other one for the basics, and then this one will be more advanced stuff. So the questions I'll be going over are on, again, you can go to wonderlaura.com and the blog post is called InfoPath Q&A on Power Hour. And those are gonna be the questions that I'll be going over. Um, and I put the link, there's also a little showcase app here in the Google Hangout. Um, when you're looking at the Google Hangout, there's a little box with some squares at the top right. And that's what lets you switch between the showcase app and the Q&A app. 
That's how you can get to the Q&A. And so the showcase app is where I've shared some links. I just basically shared a link to my um, just wonderlaura.com and it's, it's going to be the first one on there, the most recent post from today, uh, from yesterday, March 15th, 2016. All right. So let me go ahead. And so I'll just, I'm going to list out what some of these questions are before I start sharing my screen. And um, so a lot of these are going to be based on like a blog post that I wrote about querying other lists with like this concept of having a list of, you know, cascading dropdowns. Everybody wants to do cascading dropdowns, right? So you've got something like a list of regions and then each in each region you have some states um, and so you pick a region and then the next, the drop down with the states is gets filtered by only the states in that region. So Brock had a question about what if a state fell into a couple of different regions and um, how would you deal with that kind of complexity with duplicates and stuff like that. And then um, let's see, UG's, I'm just going to kind of summarize what he said. Basically, he's got um, a list of products with prices and then an order form. And then according to how many things you order in the order form, it needs to go look up to the product and spit back a total price of like the quantity that you ordered times whatever the price is of that product that you selected. And you want to be able to do it without doing a workflow and without doing custom code. Um, so I, I, I have previously done that in a workflow. I think I, I wrote how to do that in a workflow in my one of my books. I think the beginning SharePoint 2013 book. That was my little step-by-step -step thing. But this, um, I went ahead and figured out how to do that just in the info path for him, in the info path form, do the calculation just in there without having to get workflows involved. Maybe he doesn't have access to SharePoint, uh, SharePoint Designer, like a lot of people don't. And then um, Mary asked how to, you know, wants to use these lookups and get how to get additional fields from the list you're looking up to and pull those into your form and set some values. And then, um, Christy said, oh, this one's a good one. I've never seen this one. This was this one is how do you make it so that when somebody's looking at the drop down box, they can only see things certain I like certain groups of people can only see certain items. So that's an interesting one. And then um, Gina G G Jeannie G G I N and I <laughs> is a uh, has got an issue where, you know, it looks fine when you're filling out the form and then you submit it and then you open the form later and it just shows numbers. It just shows IDs of what you selected. It doesn't show the text anymore. And so, um, and that's going to be a, a very, very common one. And I'll uh, address that one. And then um, Sonia is asking a very common one too, how to construct a hyperlink inside of the InfoPath form that has got, you know, part that will take you to one of those items that you're referencing. So how do you make the, like the hyperlink dynamic in there? And that's, that's a really uh, nitty gritty fun one. All right. Also in this blog post, I like you guys to go to go read it so that you can go answer the little um, poll at the bottom that asks you what you would like another shout SharePoint Power Hour topic to be. So if you can just quickly go check some boxes there and click the vote button. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with this demo and share my screen. So get some stuff rearranged. 33 viewers. Holy cow. Oh, hey, Ben. <laughs> Good to see you. Awesome. All right. Yeah, that would be nice if there was a chat in here. Q&A is just built in and it's just easy. And I kind of did try to figure out and research maybe a better way of, um, doing that i thought about doing maybe the like the chat thing that todd does but q a is just so easy because it's it's built in and it's just there and it's just part of the google hangout that i'm using and i didn't want to have to like send people to different places okay here is my all right you can see my screen now here oh i need to change my resolution because that's not going to look good later when uh, or when when you're looking at it on youtube all right 1280 by 720 and go all right let's see keep my changes all right here's my sharepoint project site so i'm going to go over the first question the one that um i'll just go ahead and show it to you real quick um 
So if a state fell into different regions, so you don't want to duplicate all the work if a state for a state that has multiple regions. So how would you build that out? All right. So I named each of these, all the lists, the name of the person asking the question. So I spent a little extra time building this out. So I, I created a list of regions and all it has is just the name of a region. That's all that's in there. And then I lit, created a list of states and it's got just um, a lookup field that goes into the region that the state goes to. And I can um, put like, uh, let's see, what's a good example? Um, Virginia could be considered, I don't know, let's see, um, New Jersey. That can be considered north. It could also be considered east. So I'm going to see what it does when I go add another one. Oh, what did I have? Okay, New Jersey, North. Okay, I'm going to add New Jersey East. All right. So I'm going to add just one more. So I'm, add, I'm putting a duplicate in here. So we're going to talk about how we're going to deal with the duplicates. And then I also created this state's text field. It's just text. It's not a lookup. It's just the name of the state and just the name of the region, just the word. Okay, so that's different, though, because this is this thing that I'm about to show you is important to understand in all these solutions is that the lookup fields, they store the data differently. They are storing just the ID of the item in there, even though it looks like you see the word, you see the name of it. It's storing it as an ID. So that's really important to understand. That's the ID of South, which is going to be like South is going to be uh, four. ID is four. Yeah. OK, so now we're going to go ahead and go um, figure out you know, if he's if we've got a request form that's looking up a region and then getting a state, how do you do do it where you've got when you've got multiples, uh, when you've got duplicates? And we'll use New Jersey as the example, and we'll show you why lookup might not be the best way to do it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and this is just his request form, and I'm going to go ahead and all it's got is a title field in here. So I will. Um, who am I? Lo oh, I'm logged in as my other user. I logged in preemptively as my other user so that I could um, show you in a minute what it looks like to do something as another user. All right. So here's Brock's request form. And I'll go ahead and customize this in info path. And, um, you know, real quick, I just want to give you guys a tip is what I really like to do is before I start customizing a form and info path, like don't just create the list and immediately start doing this. What I really like to do is I like to go get the columns and things like I want them over in SharePoint first. And then once I click customize an info path, then at least a lot of stuff is just done here for me once I'm in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just create a couple of columns. I'm going to do like um, pick region and make that a lookup field over to the region, rock regions. And it's just going to have the name of the region. Okay. And then I'm going to have um, create another column in his request form and call it pick. And that's the one where we're going to kind of play with different ways of doing that. So um, I'm going to leave that as, I'm going to do it as a lookup. I'm going to do it two different ways and show you the difference. The lookup field. And sometimes things are just easy, easier when you use, do it as a text field. So, all right, pick a state lookup and that's going to be states like that. All right, Brock states in this column state. And then I'm going to do pick a state text. Um, all right, so there's nothing in the Q&A right now. Okay, I got to keep an eye on that. Okay, pick state text. And I'm just going to make it a text field, but remember, even if I make it a text field, I can still make it a lookup field in the info path form, right? Okay. All 
All right, so here is my little request form, Brock request form. One thing that these always are missing is just a title. Okay, so people are going to pick a region and pick a state, and then um, let's see what happens. So first of all, um, what he wants to happen is when people pick a region from the dropdown, then you want the state lookup to be filtered automatically by whatever region they pick. So then what you'd want to do is do this whole, you know, query the list thing. There are a couple of different ways to do it that, um, that you're going to be able to do. Um, you could filter, like there's a way that you can just show a filtered list here. Like there's just a little setting here that just says filter. So filtering it is one way that you can just make this list show a shorter amount of things. Um, but I usually like to do the whole query the list thing, especially when you're dealing with maybe more than a hundred or two items in there. But filtering it is a, is a perfectly acceptable way to do it. So I'll show you all that too. Um, ben says, would a calculated column pointing to your lookup column in the same list work for what? Oh, man. Calculated column 22. We're going to do something in a, uh, for a calculated column in a minute, Ben. I'm not sure exactly what you're, which one you're asking about, though. Sorry. Uh, my brain. Okay. So what I want to happen is when they pick a region, it's going to filter this. But the problem is that, now look at this. Let's go look at our, I'm going to go to advanced view and look at what we're dealing with here. So we've got our regions here. We've got query fields and data fields. All it gives me just by default when I'm dealing with a SharePoint list is just the ID and the title of that item. It's not ever going to give me all additional things by default. And same thing with the states. It's just going to give me the state and the ID, and the, you know, well, the state which is the title field in the ID. So what I need to do is I need to additional fields. I need to be able to filter the state by the region. So this is a, this one thing that I'm about to do is something that I'm going to do in like three different ones of these solutions. So I'm going to take, um, I'm going to show you what we're dealing with the states. Now you'll notice that with a SharePoint list, it doesn't let me customize anything about it. The only thing I can do is either check or uncheck the box to automatically retrieve the, retrieve the data when the form is open. That's it. So it doesn't let me add more fields. Um, okay, Ben says, when you sh we're showing the text field, oh, you create a text field. If you do a calculated column, it shows you when you look columns of text instead of doing in the info path form. Maybe, maybe. We'll, we'll look at that. We'll, we'll address that later. Uh, okay, I'll think about that. I'll ponder that one, Ben. <laughs> All right, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another data connection. There's nothing stopping me from doing that. I'm just gonna stick another one in here and it's just gonna be pulling from the same list. I'm gonna call it do Brock states and see now I can pick multiple things. I can pick as many fields as I want. I'll sort it by the name of the state ascending. And now I'm gonna say I don't wanna automatically retrieve it and I'm gonna say, I usually call it like full. Full is just what like telling me that it's got all the fields that I want. That's that's my customized one. You can name it whatever you want. So this is the default one, and this is the one I created. So instead of having it just show all of the states by default, like it was doing out of the box, I'm going to change the the value of this drop-down list. I'm not changing the field itself. I'm not doing anything in the list settings. I'm just changing what this drop-down box is going to do. Okay, so I'm going to say go to Brock states. So notice before I change it, the value it's storing is the ID of the item it's looking up to, and then the display name is the title. So the ID is what's going to be in that column. Brock states full, so I need to have that one be the value ID as well. Okay, so now um, what I can do is I can, one way I can do this is to just filter it. So I can say, you know, filter data by okay, filter data where the region lookup in that state list is equal to in my main form whatever region I've picked okay all right so let's see how that works OK, 
Okay, pick a region east. Oh, nothing's there. Okay, so what do I do to troubleshoot when nothing's there? Let's see what happens. Okay, so first of all, I have now this is I did this on purpose because you know I wanted to be able to troubleshoot something. I didn't query it yet. So remember when I um, created the data check connection, I unchecked the box to not query it. So I'll, I'll go ahead and set the, you know, the query. So as soon as I pick a region, then I want it to go do that query. Action, query for data, states full, okay, and go. Okay, pick a region east. Look at that. So there's New Jersey. It's listed there. And then... If I pick north, ooh, look at that. See, now it says 15. Weird, huh? So, because that's the what that's what it's storing as the value. Now, north, it's not showing New Jersey. Okay, so that's one of the drawbacks to using the lookup field is um, the fact that New Jersey's not showing here. Um, it is showing. At, at, hold on, east, New Jersey, north. New Jersey see but it's stored as a different ID okay does that make sense so one New Jersey let's go back over to my thing one New Jersey is uh, this ID down here which is 15 and this other New Jersey is ID 12 so they're two separate items. So I just want to have the text. I just want to have NJ as the value of my field. Okay. Instead of having to deal with all, all this ID mess, I just want it to say NJ. How hard is that? Right. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to close my little preview here. And so that, that was the drawback that I was going to point out about just picking a state and the problem with um, having it be a lookup field is just because it's doing the funkiness with the IDs with there being a couple of different ones in there. All right, so what we can do instead of picking the state that way is we can um, use this text field. All right, so I'm gonna not even get, use this lookup field. I'm just gonna like delete it off there. And I'm gonna use this text field instead. So this is just a text box. It's not a lookup to the states list. Um, but what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna change this to be a dropdown. Ooh, so I just right clicked on it and changed it. And now it's a drop down. So now, even though it's a text box in my SharePoint list, I can make it look like a drop down when people are filling the form out. So I have a little more flexibility. So I want it to go to Brock States full. I want the value to be just the title, just the name of the state instead of the ID. And the display name can just be the name of it too. All right, so um, I can do the same filter filter it where the re region lookup is equal to whatever region I just picked. And so right now I'm just doing a filter on it. And then I'll show you how to, if you have more, if you have like a whole bunch of items, instead of pulling all the data into InfoPath and then doing a filter in the dropdown, just querying only that specific subset of data. All right, so now let's try that. All right, pick a region east, NJ, north. See, it still just says NJ because it's just text. All right, so there's that solution. And then um, I was going to show you instead of filtering the drop down box, I'm going to take this little filter off of here. Remove. Um, again, the way to do it if you have um, a much larger list of information is to do this query the SharePoint list thing. So instead of just querying the whole list, I'm going to put a set a query field. So all of your different um, SharePoint lists that you pull in, they have query fields and data fields and query fields. That's the field that you're setting the value of region lookup. So when somebody picks a region, I want to set like put the word east in here and then I want it to return only the ones that say east. Okay, so I'm going to set the region lookup to have the value of whatever region I just picked. And then, so I'm going to move this up and then do the query. So now I'm not just querying the entire list. So over here in the data connection, um, 
it's not querying the whole thing when I can see in here, it's not querying the whole thing like this other one is every time the form is open. All right, uh, let's go test that one out and then we'll move on. Okay, pick a region and then see it did the query after I picked the region, but at least it's keeping the text there. All right, that makes sense. Um, let me show you visually what we're doing. So when you guys are troubleshooting this, you'll know what the heck is going on. I'm going to take all these fields and just drag them onto my form. Watch this. I'm just dragging this whole thing. Okay, now watch this when I fill out a form. What is happening? So you'll be able to tell what's happening and be able to tell what's not happening or what's not functioning correctly. As soon as I pick a region, see, it put... See, it's set region lookup to one, and that's the east region. And then it did the query, so it only returned all the ones that have one, which is east. Remember, it's stored as an ID. Then I pick north, it immediately sets the region lookup to three and does the query and only returns those. Okay, so now y'all know how that works. I'll save and publish. And y'all can ask questions as I go. Hopefully the Q&A is still functioning. Everybody say hi. 34 viewers, that's a lot. Okay, the next solution is going to be, where's my Q&A? Um, so that was Brock. And then, UGs, I'm not sure how you pronounce this, this huge, huge. Um, what he wants to happen is to have, um, when you pick a product, it, it looked up, looks up the purchase value and then it's going to let you basically calculate what um, the cost of that item times the quantity they ordered and then give you a value as the your total. Okay, so let's do that one. So I've got UGs, I've got this product list, I've got a product code, a price, and their product name. And then he said they pick a product code from the drop down box. So I just, um, in my purchase form, um, I just created a product code lookup field over just to the code in here and then um so that you fill it out you type a quantity and then it returns a value so um let's go over to well let me just show you real quick new item product code quantity and then it calculates it out cool all right and then also i'm going to address this problem watch so now when i go open that item See, this is another problem that um, people have asked about where it, once you open it later, it doesn't still have the value that it had in it when you did the query. So that's an important one to, uh, to understand. Um, like when we did the Brock states thing, we just set it as a text value. Oops, so the Brock request form. We just set it as a text value. Let me go fill one of these out. So... When I save it, it will open it back up. It's just going to say MI in there because I just set it as in a text field. But the problem with this querying thing is that you query it when you know they're selecting something and then they open the form later and you don't have it querying that list, then the value is not there. So um, this is where we get into um, this one and I'll address that here and, and when we get to Mary's I'll address it in that one too. All right. I lost three viewers. It must have offended somebody. It must have like it must be really boring. Okay. <laughs> now we've got um, here's the way we're doing this one. Now I had to do the same thing because I wanted when I look at the list of products, like go over to advanced view and go look at some of my other data connections, the list of products that it put in here just out of the box when I did a lookup field was just the code and the ID. So it doesn't have any of those other fields, but I need the cost, right? I need the cost of that item. So I created another data connection and I picked, I also picked the unit price there. So that's what I'm gonna use to be able to get that. So in the product code field, um, I pick, uh, data source, excuse me, uh, let's see, 
yeah, so I need to pick product full so that when they pick a product, it's um, gonna, you know, get the right item. Now, I'm just, basically I'm picking, I'm still just picking from that same data connection it had here, but the trick is that once they pick something, I'm, I'm using that full list of that data connection to be able to um, get that extra information that I need. So let's see, when I pick a product code, we need to get the manage rules pane. Oh, um, Ben says, what's the difference between query fields and data fields? Well, um, Ben, that's what I was just um, kind of, let's see, when I was showing over here when I did this uh, request form. So the query field is the one that you're you're putting a value like state, region, lookup, and ID. That's the one that you're putting a value in. And then when you do the query, it sends back only the ones with that particular value. So I say region lookup is four. So then when I do the query, it only returns things where that value, that field equals four. So if I had a more complex list with a bunch of fields, I can make it more specific by setting very, I could set several query fields. You can only do exact values in there though, Ben. Um, and I also, in my, in the people picker, the other um, power hour that I did, I demoed how to do this with, um, with the user profile service, how to you know set the query field as somebody's name, and then when it returns the query, it gives you all the information about them. Um, I even wrote a blog post about user information in InfoPath forms, about how to use the user information list as well, instead of the, if you didn't have the user profile service, and it also talks about how to do this by querying the user information list by like give me everybody that's in this department with this job title and then it would just you'd set both of those query fields and it would spit back a whole bunch of stuff yeah cool all right now okay so product code is the trick here is going to be that when i as soon as i pick a product it's going to set the query field of the ID, because remember it stores it as an ID. It's going to set the ID in query field as whatever product code I picked. And then it's going to do the query. That way it's only going to return a subset, a certain subset of information. It's only going to return one thing pretty much. So just to test this out to see what it's doing, I'll just take this whole repeating table, this whole list of information, and drag it on here so you can see what's happening when I pick a product. So it's, and then what I have happening here is they're, they're typing a number, it's just a number field. And then what I did is I put the purchase value is just going to be a calculation and I'll just redo this calculation. It's going to be whatever the quantity is that they typed times, you have to put a space in here when you do calculation, times the unit price. And since this product full data connection is only going to return one row because it's going to return just the one row of the product they pick, <coughs> then that way you're only going to get one price listed here. Okay. So it's going to be that times the unit price. And then I want it to refresh value and formulas recalculate. So let's watch what that does. All right, so I don't have a value yet. It's kind of ugly. All right. So I pick the product code of 456, and I say I'm purchase, purchasing 78 of them. And notice that as soon as I clicked four, five, this product code, it did the query and returned back this one row, and then it did the calculation of 78 times 4, maybe like 2 times 4. So it's calculating this times this. The problem now is what you saw when I um, when I open up an item after I've filled this form out is that this calculation is just being this uh, the query is just being done that one time when you pick a product code, and then the calculation is being done and but it's not storing this value anywhere. It's just calculating it dynamically. And it's not keeping that number eight somewhere. So if I open this form later, um, it, I'd, you know, I'd have to make it go query the list again 
and then get the value. The value might change though. So what I really want to do probably for this is, you know, you're, you don't want your purchase value to change like later when they open this item up, like that's whatever the value was when they first, when they bought it, when they filled this form out. So what we really need to do is um, instead of having that calculation be just dynamic and it's just every time the num number changes, it changes. We need to just do the calculation and set the purchase value field and make it so that it's not going to change. So instead of doing this calculation, as just the default value of the purchase value, what we're going to do is just say that whenever they change the quantity, then it will um, do the calculation. All right. So let's see. I'll go action and then set a fields value. Purchase value is going to be itself the quantity times and then I'll go to get that one item the price yes at, yes Alon this is being recorded and it's all um, it's all my YouTube channel Wonder Laura 67 all right so now it's just gonna set the value and then if you change the quantity again it'll set the value again um, we probably, they could potentially change the product code also. So we would probably want to go set the value um, when they change the product code, code too, because in case it's a different product with a different um, quantity um, and with a different price. So I'm going to do another rule. If there is a quantity, basically, if the quantity is uh, not blank, then set a fields value no wait not quantity yeah set a fields value to of purchase value and i'm going to do that same exact calculation of quantity times um that one row that got returned okay now let's preview that All right, I'll pick a product code. Okay, hot dogs. So I haven't typed in a quantity yet. So now when I type in a quantity, um, well, it's only $1. So eight times one is eight. So if I pick um, this one, notice that I changed the product code, which retrieved a new product with a different price. And so since I had created that rule, it went ahead and recalculated the value. So that's why I need to have a rule on both of these so that whichever one I change, it'll change it to the right thing. So now it's doing two, two times two is four. Okay. And so you can always have your um, values showing down here to be able to test them. All right. Another thing that I do sometimes when I'm testing these is I will take all my query fields and just throw those on the form too like i did a minute ago and then also instead of relying on whatever i'm doing in the rules if i just want to quickly test something i can just stick a button on here that just does the query query for data there so now i can make it say query if i want this way again for testing i can figure out what's going wrong if i need to by just having all these values on the thing here and being able to query. So let's do unit price one and query. Oh, look at that. It's returning back the, this one product that has a unit price of one. So I can see I can do any of these different um, product name apples query. So yeah, so that's how I can quickly test what's coming back when it does that. Alrighty, now let's see. So that's how we do the calculation. And that way, so that way we're setting the field's value in there instead of having it dynamically calculated at, you know, if the, the query isn't being done again later when you're um, opening the form up. So let me just save and publish that. Let's see. The next one is going to be. Okay, so we got that. All right, Mary, 
She's built the cascading field. She has team program and task when she picks a team. It's updating her options for program. Then she picks a program. She wants it to automatically pull additional fields over and put them in the task list. Okay, so I built that one out too. All right, so let's go over to Mary. Mary, program, Mary, tasks, Mary, add another one. Site contents. All right, Mary program, Mary test, Mary team. Okay, watch this. There. Nice little trick, huh? Okay, so when she picks a team, the team is the first one. So team is the first one. So it's just, I just put team A, B, and C. Then she's got um, programs, which are just the names of some programs and the team that, they, that each one goes with. So any team can have multiple programs associated with it. And then I added a couple of extra fields here. I added um, priority, because I know that's a that was just one of the out-of-the-box task fields. And then I added a description. So the trick is that now when... Um, we're filling out this Mary, um, the Mary task um, form. Whenever you pick the program, it's going to automatically populate some of those task fields with um, information about that program. So watch this. So test. And then this is the magic down here at the bottom. Team lookup. So pick a team. And then it's filtering it by only the programs that are associated with that team. And then... Look at that, as soon as I pick program three, it filled in the description and the priority. See, watch when I pick a different program. Blah, 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 it's a description. And you know, you can make those fields read only if you don't want people to change it after they do that. All right, so that's what I'll demo now. And then I'm also gonna demo the fact that with this one, um, see, it looks like a number later, so we'll fix that issue. And again, um, that's one that people bring up a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, back up to 32 viewers. Oh, so, oh no, 31. <laughs> People are coming and going. All right, so this is Mary Task. And I don't know if any of these people who ask these questions are actually here or know about this, but um, so a lot of the times people make comments on the blog and I don't know, have any way to necessarily let them know or get back with them. Um, okay. So what I did is same old, same old. So Mary program just out of the box. It just had, you know, those two fields that just the name of the program and the ID. And then of course you can't add more. So I added another data connection and I added the team lookup as well. And I added the priority in the description because those are additional fields. I need to get information out of those and put them in my task as soon as somebody selects that program. All right. And then I made this so it doesn't automatically retrieve data when the form is open. Okay. So when someone is picking a uh, team, it's just pretty straightforward. That's just the regular old out of the box lookup for the teams. So I didn't do anything to that one. Except let's go over to the rules. I made this program look up. Um, I pointed it to the program full list. Again, ID and title. And then I said when someone picks a team, it's setting this query field. So in the Mary program full data connection, it's setting the query field of team lookup to whatever they just picked in team lookup, just whatever they picked in that drop down box. And then, um, so it's setting the field, setting the query field, then doing the query. So it's only going to return those programs that go with that team. And then therefore the drop down box is only going to show that subset of information. And so, but then when someone picks a program, I have it doing some additional things. So I have to set the description and the priority. So I'm actually going to delete these and show you how I did it. Okay, set a fields value, field description. I'm going to set the description to what value? I want the description of the 
name of the uh, from the team that I just picked. So I have to go to advanced view and I have to go over to, I'm sorry, the program I just picked. <laughs> I'm going to confuse myself. I have to get um, the information, the description from the program that I just picked. So here's the description. But if I just click description and click OK, it's it's it brought back multiple programs, right? It, it it's going to have several in there. It's not just one program. Now, with the solution we were dealing with a minute ago with the product, it was just one product. There was only one row that we were dealing with with one price. But this one is going to have multiple programs that it returns. So I need to get a specific description fields from a specific program. So I'm going to use the filter data field. So get the program where the ID of that program is equal to whatever they just picked for program lookup, whatever they just clicked on. So let me double check that I did that syntax right before I do the um, other one. Team B. Program five. Oh, yep. See, it worked. Yay. Okay. Golf clap. All right. So now I can kind of do the same thing. I can say set a field's value. I'm setting the field of priority to B. I have to get that other priority from that other list. Program full priority where the ID of that item, because again, if it's a lookup, it's being stored as an ID, is equal to again in my main form basically this program lookup the one that i just selected okay and uh now that's how that works but i am going to show you a cool way that i demonstrated this so you'd understand because that's a lot of complicated clicking and filtering and information so what i did was i used to love access i used to work in it all the time was i um pulled these into a query and access so I could show you kind of some of these relationships. Get some water. Um, so team, again, is the first one that I pick. And then team lookup is just a regular old lookup field that I created in my list settings. But by default, it stores the ID of that team. And then um, the tasks, I have it also, it also has a team lookup field that is also stored as an ID here. Um, and then the program lookup is stored as the ID of the program. So you can see everything that says it's a lookup field is basically just pointing to the ID of the thing it's looking up to. So I thought that was a good little demonstration of some just visually to be able to understand what these things are doing. Golf clap. Anybody think that's cool? You're like, whoa, you can do that in Access. Maybe I should do a whole power hour about Access and doing queries to SharePoint and doing reports. <laughs> All right. Um, now, the problem is the one that I showed you when we filled out the form. When you go back and open it later, then it's just going to show the number here. So we don't want that to happen. So here, watch. Watch closely. Here's what I'm going to do. Now, the problem is that we were just doing the query when someone picked a team. So the data is not being pulled into the form if they haven't just clicked on that box. So let me show you visually what I'm talking about. Let me go to my advanced view here and show you this repeating table. Okay, and preview that. And this is all, I'm doing all this in my Office 365 site, by the way, if you couldn't tell. Okay, team lookup, team A. See, look at that. See, it's bringing back several different programs. And then I'm going to pick program four, and then it's going to go get me the descriptive st stuff and the priority from there and put it in here. And um, so I want to show you what that looks like. Um, it's pulling back all that information. So I'm going to go ahead and close that preview, and I'm going to quick publish that and show you visually on the form what the difference is so you'll understand why it's not getting it um, later. 
Okay, so let's go fill out a new task. Blah. Team B. Program 8. Oh, it didn't. I could have sworn I. Oh, I didn't wait long enough. <laughs> now it's published. Hold on. It just wasn't finished publishing before I went and created a new item. Come on, task. There we go. See, there's my stuff at the bottom. Okay. Blah. Two team B. See, there's my stuff. Program eight. Fill that in and then save it. And then, so let's go open up my task name, blah. And notice that, see, it's it didn't, it doesn't have the information because I haven't done the query yet. So that's why I have to add a query into my form. Because right now, the only time I have the query happening is when someone fills this for, field in. So this for so for this case, now I have to do a form load rule. So every time somebody opens the form, I need it to do the query again. So I'll do an action rule, and I'll say, so as soon as somebody opens the form, um, Set a fields value. So I got to basically do the same exact thing. So let me just delete this. Watch, I'm going to copy my rule. Copy, go to form load, paste. Okay. So set a fields value, team lookup, that's my query field, and then query it. So now every time the form opens, it's doing the same thing that it does when someone picks a team. So let's go, I'm going to quick publish that. I got a couple more solutions, so I'll um, double check that real quick. Now we can go open up blah, and the form load rule probably fixed it. Yep. So now when the form's loaded, it's automatically doing that query, so it's got the data in there. All right, that one's fixed. Done. Check. Okay, next one is. Um, it's the same solution. We're going to try to populate a text box on the info path form with concatenated values from the share one filtered on a separate field from the info path form. Okay, let's just use the same form. Um, I think I can, because we're kind of doing the same thing where we're pulling in a couple of fields from here. So um, I'm going to just do something where I'm going to concatenate some fields together and just put it in the task name just for fun. Um, it'll choose that field since it's a nice, easy text box. So when someone picks a program and it's going to, it's already setting the description, it's already setting the priority. Now it's going to do set of fields value task name two, and this is where he wants to concatenate. So that's, that's a function in here, concat. So I can concatenate, um, let's see, the name of the program with, I'm just going to pick a couple of things, and then a hyphen, and then go back over to my program full here, um, the ID. Let's see what that looks like. So, um, oh wait, and it's got to do a specific one. So he wanted to filter it. So I've got to do, I got to get the right one. Where the ID equal to, and that's going to be the ID is the name of the program I just picked. That, so I got to get the right title. And then I got to get the right ID, not just any ID. If I don't put a filter here, it's just going to pick the first one it finds. Where um, the ID is equal to, um, and then the one I just picked in the main form there. Ta da! Okay, let's test that out. Of course, you'd probably want to have them in a different order in the form. You don't want somebody filling out the task name and then having it um, change it on them. There we go. Program four hyphen four. So it was the oh, the ID was it was the ID four. So that's how you concatenate. All right, that one's done. Um, next question is. Um, 
Is it possible to add an item to the drop down only that a specific group can see? So let's do that one. Let's do um, his uh, product list. So what I'm going to try is I'm going to put just a um, SharePoint permission on item 456 here. Okay, so I'm just going to go to the item. And I'm going to stop inheriting permissions and take members off of here. So members can't even, they don't even have access to that one particular item in the list. Now, I, I'm not sure, you know, it's, it's kind of sketchy when we get a cart, start getting into individual item level permissions, but I think that that's going to be a good way to solve this particular one. So this one is um, 456. Um, let's see. So 456. Now I can see it probably, and that's why I logged in as that other user in my other window. So I can see it as me. And let's go log in as my other user that is in the members group. Let me just like refresh the site here. Just make sure. And then I've got purchase form here. Oh, look at that. See, if they don't have permissions to that item, they won't see it in the drop down box. That's what I thought. Okay, that answers that question. And then, um, ID. Okay, this is the one that I already showed y'all how to solve. So basically, the answer is to put that form load rule on there so that it does the query later when the form, just anytime the form is open. So you'll have all that information instead of just that ID that's being stored in there. Um, and then, ooh, I've got four minutes. <laughs> Let's see if we can get the URL thing uh, built. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, Mary Program has got tasks that look up to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this form real quick. If I go over four minutes, who cares, right? Is I'm going to edit this form real quick, and I'm going to make it show all the tasks that are related um, to it just at the bottom of this form. So I'm going to do a data connection and receive data. I'll get Mary. What is it? That's my Mary one, right? Yeah. Mary tasks. <laughs> and then I want to be able to have a hyperlink to each task. So that's the tricky part. So task name, and I'll just say task status. Okay, don't want all the tasks. That could potentially be lots of tasks. So what I want to happen is um, I want to just show the tasks that are related to this item. And when I'm creating a new item, I'm not necessarily going to have any tasks related to it yet. So I don't need to do that on these fields. I just really need to have it done on a form load rule. So like when I'm opening it later, I can see the related tasks. So set a field's value. Uh, Mary tasks. Um, ooh, I need more fields than that. I don't have enough fields in my Mary tasks. I need to have the one that looks up to the program, right? Program lookup. Because this is the program form that I'm on. Mary program. So I will remember. Okay. So on form load. Okay. Set a field's value. Field. You know what? When I when I keep having to click this advanced view, I'm just going to click advanced view here. That way, every time I go into all these dialog boxes, I don't have to uh, keep clicking advanced view. All right. I'm going to set my query field in the task list. In the task list to program look of program lookup to whatever the idea is of the current item should work and then do the query to Mary tasks and then let's just see if that works so let's just get Mary tasks and just drag that on here 
and preview. Oh, wait, it's not going to work with a preview because I have it as a form load rule and this one doesn't have any values in it. <laughs> All right. 28 viewers and no questions. Wow. I'm glad I came with my own questions. <laughs> okay. Merry program. Let's try this. I'm going to open up just an existing. Oh, I got to make sure which one has tasks associated with it. Let's see. Program four, six, eight. I'm going to have, I'm going to create like two of these tasks that are associated with program four, just so I'll have a couple in the list just to get a better idea. Okay. So stop. Um, which one had program four? Yeah, there we go. Okay. And then save. Okay. <clears throat> so now, um, ooh, I chose program one. I could have sworn I chose program four. Oh, I should have double checked before I click save program four. <laughs> Thanks, Ann. I didn't do anything different, though. <laughs> okay, it let me pick program four that time. <laughs> okay, and I see, and it put the task name as program four. Okay, now we will go over to Mary Program and open up program four. And we should see, aha, two tasks down at the bottom. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So now the trick is we want to have a hyperlink on those tasks. This is very nitty gritty. Okay, so task name needs to have, we need to have a hyperlink to the task name. So I'm going to um, just add a column in here. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. All right, and I'll just call it link. I type open. I'm going to make that a hyperlink. I haven't done this one in a while, so this will be interesting. Okay. Insert hyperlink. And the address is going to be, I need to have, basically, I need to have just everything except for the ID part at the end. Um, so I need to go get the address of the task list. So let me just go get, now, as we all know, um, the uh the URL to just any one item in a list is going to be the display. Um, it's usually going to, if we don't have SharePoint, if we don't have InfoPath involved, it's just like display form dot ASPX question mark ID equals. So let's see. From, from what I can recall, if I just put, let me get notepad open. And I know that it's past noon, but doesn't really matter. I don't have any meetings right now, so I'm just going to finish this one out. Um, display form. ID equals four. I'm just going to make up a name and number in there. And I'm just going to test this real quick by just pasting it in the browser. Oop, that's my other. I'm logged in as that other user. Sorry. Go back. Oh, so now it didn't work. So it's got to do. It's got to be the display IFS thing. Okay, that's why I tested it. Display IFS. I really don't think I need that list and all that junk, but I might. That one. Always do this stuff in Notepad. I made this more complicated by having this be an InfoPath form because if it was just a regular display form, it would be a lot simpler. And task, do I have, oh, maybe I don't have four tasks in here. Mm -hmm. Test one, let's just get this whole thing copy. I think that ID is one. So I'm gonna try this one with ID equals one. Copy, I'm gonna try the way I had it with a one. There we go. Okay, that one works. So this one right here works. I didn't have to put all that other junk in there. All right. 
So this is the URL that I need, except the this one, this number is going to be what's going to be different. So I'm going to take that part and copy that over to here. And I'm going to do, um, God, let's see if I can remember that ID equals, and then I'm going to need like this weird, uh, syntax. I'll show you in a second. So I need the syntax of this thing as in the X path. So I copy the X path and let's see what that looks like. That's my X path. That's what I need. So copy that. I know this is really complicated. I should write a whole separate blog post about this, or I could just tell people to go watch this video. Okay. So I put the most of the hyperlink except for the part where it's dynamic, where it's a value, where it's a field value. And I just pasted that in there. Let's see what it does. I think that works. All right, let me try that. This is one of those things that I have, you know, a copy of it working somewhere and I usually have to go test it or go refer reference it every time I do the thing with the hyperlink. Uh, let me go open up. Oops. Let me open up Mary program again. Program four. So that's the one that had a couple of different tasks. Oh, nope. See, it just has a quote, some quotes at the end of it. Okay, see when I hover over it, it just says ID equals and then quotes. Okay, so let's fix that. I know that it has to do with the X path. So let me see. ID equals. Oh, where did my thing go that I put in there? I wonder. Didn't put my X path in there. Let me see if it saved it in there. Hyperlink. Yeah, it's in there now. Okay. All right. When I make sure that it's working, then I'll uh, we'll double check that and I'll show you what the syntax was. I don't need, I don't know, remember if there needs to be something in between, you know what I mean? Like in between the URL and then the ID. Ah, no, because it just had, it just had like literally the X path in it. Okay. I'm trying to think where I can reference where I've done this before. I might have to, I might have to just do this one later. Um, I've already gone seven minutes over. This is one of those things that I do get a lot of people asking me about. Um, but it's just so weird and nuanced and so very specific that it's just one of those things that I don't remember exactly what it's supposed to be. Does that make sense? So, yeah. It's got parentheses somewhere, maybe. I don't know. Sorry about that. We'll figure it out later. All right. And I think that was the last. Uh, let me um, stop sharing my screen. Yay. All right. There's me. Okay. I think that was the last. Yeah, that was the last one. I figured I could get all those into an hour. And y'all don't forget to go to mywonderlaura.com. Check it out. Let me know what you think of my new site. I'm pretty excited about it. And um, go fill out the little form, the little poll um, in, in this blog post that we've been talking about. It's at the, the very bottom about what you would like as your, um, about another Power Hour topic. And it's got InfoPath Form Web Part, Advanced Workflows, Power BI, and Workflows on Content Types are some of the options. And there's even a box for other. Um, Thanks, Andy. I'm glad you like it. So far, the winner is workflows on content types with nine votes. But you guys feel feel free to fill stuff in. I had I had done a poll on PollEverywhere.com and asked for Power Hour topics, and I don't know if you guys were messing with me or what, but it had stuff like jQuery and deploying solutions and all this stuff. I'm like. People know I'm not a developer, right? I was very, <laughs> I just figured maybe people were messing with me. But um, anyway, I'm glad you like my new blog. Um, I hope that if you guys are looking for something or linking to my blog for, from somewhere else and you end up on the new one, then you, you'll be able to just find what you're looking for because there's a pretty little search box in there. So 
thanks everybody for coming. And um, I think Joelle might be joining me next week um, and doing something. I'm not positive yet what exactly we'll be doing, but um, I'll see y'all next time every Wednesday at 11. Bye.